Hey everyone, welcome back to the Transformers tutorial. Today we'll be looking at self-attention and we'll actually get hands-on with some code here. So in the last video, um, we, we started to understand holistically how the encoder is looking. We have two sub-layers, or yeah. So in one encoder layer, we have two, we have two sub-layers. So these are what's in between the white boxes. In the first sub-layer, we have multi-head self-attention and then we follow it up with a residual and layer normalization. In the second sublayer, we have some, a position-wise feedforward network, and then we follow that up with a residual layer normalization. And I will understand, um, I will describe all of these so you can have a strong understanding of that. Now, the output of the, of the encoder layer forms the input to the next encoder layer. Let's take a dive into, uh, into the first sublayer. Okay. So remember, we're working with our source sentence, main shatahun, and we want to decode this into I am a student, which is in English. Now, let's just say we're at an arbitrary encoder layer. So, you know, here we've just seen an encoder layer run before, and here we've seen an encoder layer run afterwards, or we're, we're going to see an encoder layer run afterwards. So it, let's say this is the, the first layer, this is the second layer, and this is the third layer. So let's say this first layer has already run, and we've managed to get some encodings for each of our words. Okay, so in our source sentence, we had three words and we have encodings for them. Okay, so these are the hidden representations of the network. So for every word that we have, we have some D-dimensional representation. So here D is four. Um, obviously in your actual model, it's going to be bigger, but just for visual, just so you can see it visually, we have um, four dimensions representing each one of our words. Now, in Transformers, the dimensionality generally stays fixed for everything within the model. So everything is, tends to be compatible in, in terms of the shape. So each one of our inputs or each one of our words gets sent to a multi-head self-attention block. And uh, in the next slide, we'll, we'll dive into what this is uh, in a bit more detail. Now, we have three words here and we have three outputs here as well, okay? So note that everything here We'll have as many, or throughout the whole encoder, throughout the whole transformer, we'll have as many um, words in every every particular step as we do input words. Okay, so after the we have three input words, the multi head self attention block runs. We get three input words again, or three words, each one of these in d dimensions. But now they have the representations of of uh, or the outputs of the the self attention block baked into these representations. And we'll look at that in a second. Then we'll send them to a residual and layer normalization layer. And again, we'll have three outputs. Okay, let's take a look at the multi-head self-attention block. So um, before looking at multi-head self-attention, we're going to be looking at self-attention. And self-attention is a mechanism that allows every input in the sequence to look at the whole sequence to compute a representation of the sequence. And yes, I fully understand how you might need to parse that in your head a couple of times to understand what it's saying. If I was to reword it, I would say every word looks at every other word and then it bases its representation of that one word based on the other words inside of the, uh, inside of the sequence. Okay, so here main would look at Shatter main would look at hoon, then shatter would look at main, it would look at hoon, and then hoon would look at main, and it would look at shatter. Um, and excuse my pronunciation. Um, we see a visual example here. Um, th this is the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. And here, what we're trying to do is just conceptually um, understand what it refers to. Does it refer to the animal um, or does it refer to the street? Like for, for, for a human, it's pretty intuitive to understand that it refers to the animal. What we want to do is try and bake this intuition inside of the transformer. So for every word that we have, we have a representation for this word. And the representation for the word is based on every single word also in this input sequence. Okay, so here we just see that the word it, it aligns most or it pays most attention to the animal. Okay, the, the color here is higher. And this is what we're going to try and do with self-attention. We're going to try and uh, have the meaning of one word use every other word to encode its meaning. So 
the way we do this is by using the attention formula. And I'm going to break this down. I just want to show you what it is before we actually start working with it. And I will provide a very intuitive breakdown of how this works. Okay, so it's a function of something that's known as Q, something that's known as K, and something that's known as V. Now, Q stands for queries, K stands for v, uh, keys, and V stands for values. And I, don't worry, I fully understand how this um, doesn't make sense right now, but we're going to break down, break it down. Um, and I just want to, as I said, just introduce it to you. Okay, so what we have is um, Q dot K transpose. So Q matrix multiplied by K. We're going to divide it by the dimensionality of the model. So that's just represented here as DH. And then we're going to softmax it. Now, if you remember, a softmax gives us a probability distribution where everything sums up to one. Now, from this probability distribution, we're going to multiply it by V, our values. And this will give us our final, um, final representations for every word in the input sequence. Now, as I said, I don't expect you to understand this. That's what the next slides are for. So let's run through it intuitively, and then we can look at actually applying it in code and to, to a real life example. Okay, so the intuition is, um, let's define a queue, a query, okay? Um, we're gonna be working with colors here because, uh, and colors and RGB values. So let's say we have a dictionary or a table, just imagine a Python dictionary, right? Where we have um, a bunch of different colors as the keys. So red, green, blue, yellow, black, and white. And we also have um, the values, okay? So we know the hex or the, the RGB values for each one of the colors that we have. Red is 25500, white is 25525255, and so forth. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to define a queue. For, for, for this particular example, we're going to define a queue, which is in one of our, um, or for the first example, we're going to define a query, which is in one of our uh, keys, okay? Then we're gonna say, how similar is this query to all of the keys? And the value of the query, which is what we're trying to obtain, we're trying to say, hey, look, um, if we feed in the color yellow, what is the value of the color yellow based on all the existing keys that we have there? Okay, so Q's value is the weighted sum of the values of what we have in our dictionary. With an example, if we say our query is yellow, we have an exact match of yellow with this yellow here. Okay, so therefore the value of our query is going to be 255.255.0. Okay, let's say we have a query of orange. Now we know orange is 50% red and 50% yellow. Okay, so that means intuitively we know that um, we should take 50% of the value of red and 50% of the value of yellow, and then together the average of those will make the color of orange. Okay, so if we times uh, our red value by 0 0.5 and our yellow value by 0 0.5, we'll get our average value, and this is orange. And you can type this into Google or wherever else, um, and you'll see that this color actually comes out as orange. Now, let's look at vectors, okay? So let's say our query is 0, 10, 0, okay? Here we have our, our keys and our values, and we'll see here that we have an exact match with uh, the key 0, 10, 0, and this gives us the value of 10, 0, 2. So for the query, 0, 10, 0, we obtain a value of 10, 0, 2. Let's say we have a query, query which is repeated. So zero, our query is 0, uh, zero, zero 10. We have two keys of 0, zero 10. So what we do is we average the values. Okay, So we have one match which has a value of 100, 5, 0, and another one which has a, a, a match of 1,000, 6, 0. So for our query, our final value will be the average of the um, of the keys which match and align to it. Okay, so um, we'll take half of uh, half of this vector. So zero point five times hundred five zero plus zero point five times one thousand six zero, and that means five fifty five point five zero is our value representation for our key query. Sorry. Let's say we now had the query 10, 10, 0, okay? So this doesn't actually exist as a key, but we see that there's similarity between this key and this key. So this has a 10, this has a 10, okay? So again, we're going to average um, the representations or the value representations for the keys which match and align with our query. 
So here with our query of 10, 10, 0, we're going to take half the weight of this value and half the weight of this value. Okay, so 0 0.5 times uh, 101 plus 0 0.5 times 10, 0, 2. And this gives us our representation of 5.5, 5. Okay, so this query now has a value of 5.5, 0, 1.5 based on the keys and values that we've defined. Okay, so this is what it looks like in vector form. Now, the idea is that we will have a machine learn or a neural network or some kind of layer learn the representations of Q for every single word, a representation of key for every single word, and a value for every single word. So let's look at how this is done. Okay, so here's our source sentence main shatarhun okay so we have encodings of the word uh, of each of the words that that was introduced in a previous slide so here we have uh the encoding of w1 the encoding of w2 and the encoding of w3 now what we'll do is we'll feed these through a linear layer okay so where we see wq wk wv these are basically linear layers we'll implement them in pytorch as nn.linear now uh, as far as dimensions go so D is going to be our dimension of the model, and we also have this DH here as well. Now, here, capital D and DH are the same. There's a reason I've made this distinction, despite them being the same here in this picture, and this will be introduced when we talk about multi-head self-attention. But here, for, the, for, for all intents and purposes, capital D and D are going to be the same dimension. So what that means is we'll go from something which is capital D dimensions to something which is DH dimensions, okay? And as I said, here they're the same. Visually here, they're both four, okay? So we will project each one of our word, each one of our, each one of the encodings that we have for our word into another representation. And these are learned by a network, okay? So we're going to have a Q representation we're going to do the same for K, so we'll have a K representation, and these are the same These are the same encodings which are fed into the Q network, the K network, and the V network, but because they're different sets of weights, we're going to learn different representations for each one of these. Okay, so we have a K representation here, and we have a V representation here as well. So for every single word, we'll have a Q representation for it, a K representation for it, and a V representation for it. Now. Um, just in the in the context of vectors, so um, we have W1 here. So here, let's just look at this particular word. We won't consider W2 or W3 at this point, but just W1. W1, map mole by Q1 will give us Q1. Uh, sorry, map mole by WQ will give us Q1, okay? Um, Q2 is W2 map mold by WQ. And this will give us Q2. Similarly, for to get, obtain K1, we will take W1, we will map mullet by WK, and that will give us K1. And again, same for the value. Now in matrix form, let's say the um, the length of our sequence is capital T. Okay, T standing for for time, like maximum time. Now, what we'll do is we'll just have a matrix. So these will be a stack of vectors, right? We'll have W1. So I um, wonder if I can just draw this here. Our matrix will be W1, W2, W3, right? So this will be, sorry, excuse the atrociousness. Um, so these would just be these um, these encodings of the words in just stacked as as a matrix, right? So the dimension of this would be t because uh, sorry t by d h, so uh, sorry t by capital D, right? So we have t words, one word, two word, three words. So t here is three, and then each one of these words has a d-dimensional representation. Okay, so our, our matrix for our input will be in T by D, okay? Now, when we look at these, these weights here, let me just uh, change back to a laser pointer. 
we can think of this as like something which is d-dimensional as it will take something which is d-dimensional as input and it will change it to something which is dh-dimensional as output now anyway what we'll do is we'll take our input which we're which we're calling here x so this is x equals this matrix then we'll map model it by wq and this will give us our q matrix and this will be in t by dh okay why why is that well let's think back to the rules of matrix multiplication so um uh, i'll just use this example here so we have something which is in t by d and we're map modeling it by something which is in uh d by dh so that means we'll take the inner dimensions or the outer dimension of the the first matrix the inner dimension of the second matrix and the shape of our resulting matrix will be the outer dimension will be the first dimension of our first matrix and the outer dimension of our last matrix. So this will give us something which is in T by DH. Okay, so when we take X, when we take our matrix and we multiply it by WQ, WK or WV, all of which have uh, all of which are in D by DH, we obtain um, a matrix which is in T, so our sequence length, multiplied by this um, new model dimensionality or this new dimensionality. Okay, so let's break down this formula, how it works, and we'll do this in vector form first. Okay, so if I just, uh, if I scroll back, see if I have it here. Um, okay, I'll just go here. Um, don't worry about the shapes, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this slide in a second. But what we have is we have a couple of operations. We have Q map mold by K, we then have a division over the square root of D, and I'll, I'll talk about this when we get to there. Um, then we have a softmax, which transforms it into a probability distribution, and then we multiply it by V, the values. So uh, let's take a look at what's actually going on. So uh, this is in vector form right now. Um, we'll build the intuition this way, and then you can see how, how to pretty easily apply it in matrix form. So here we have each one of our words, W1, W2, W3, alongside the encodings of each of the words. Okay, so just looking at the left-hand side of the screen right now. Now, for word one, we're going to have the query of this word. Okay, and we have the key representations for every single word as well. But right now, for W1, we just care about Q1, but we care about all the Ks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work out some kind of intermediary score. So this will be Q1.K1. So this is, uh, in vector form, this is kind of uh, mimicking this operation here, this Q.K. Then we're gonna have q1.k2, q1.k3, and the notation I'm using here is S stands for score, and we have one, so this is the first word. So um, the score of word one with respect to um, word one is going to give us S11. The score of word one with respect to word two is going to give us S12. The score of word one with respect to S uh, with th to three is going to give us um, uh, S, uh, S13. Now, why are we doing this? Basically, what we're saying is, find me the vectors which are similar to Q. So, for every K vector, we want to find vectors which Q is similar to it. Or maybe I can rephrase that. For every Q, we want to find similar vectors. And these similar, similar vectors will come from, from our keys. So this is basically mimicking this process that we had here. Find me similar vectors to this vector. Okay, now the way we do this is with the, um, with the dot product or, or the cosine distance. Now, what we're going to do then is square root this by dh, and this is purely just to um, make the softmax a bit nicer, so we don't assign, so we don't have too pointy of a, a distribution. It's not so skewed to, to the most similar value. Um, so this is just, uh, theoretically, we don't actually need it to understand what's going on, but practically having this scaling factor makes it, um, makes it so the values aren't as, after the softmax, aren't as separated out. So we don't have something which is 0 0.9, and then we have something which is 0 0.5, and then 0 0.5. It'll be more like we have something which is, uh, you know, 0 0.6, and then 0 0.2, and then 0 0.2. Then we have our softmax operation, and all I've used here is arrows just to indicate the magnitude of each one of these, um, uh, each one of the similarities, basically. So with softmax, um, all of our scores, okay? And we see that after the softmax, we have S11 being a higher value than S12 or S13. 
Now we'll take each one of our value vectors. So this comes from this um, V matrix here. We'll have each one of our value vectors. And we will um, multiply the softmax value obtained with each one of the value vectors. Okay, so we know that this is higher. So this means that when we multiply this um, when we multiply this value vector by this up arrow, it means that we're going to get a stronger representation of this particular value and a weaker representation of, of these particular values. Okay, so just imagine it like this. If this was one and this was zero, then we would have the full value of uh, this value vector here, and these would be zeroed out. Okay, now obviously the distribution isn't going to be skewed like that in practicality, but the idea here is that based on the similarity of the Q's and the K's, we want to find out, uh, we want to weight the values from our network the same with the, based on the similarity that each, each query has to each key. So let's say this was, um, if we just go back to that example earlier on, uh, 0 0.6, uh, if, this was, if this was the softmax value, if this was 0 0.6, this was 0 0.2, and this was 0 0.2, then what that's saying is we'll do, we'll have 0 0.6 times this value vector, 0 0.2 times this value vector, and 0 0.2 times this value vector. And then we'll sum all of them together. Okay, why do we do this? Because we want a vector representation for W1 or for W1 based on the based on how influential every other word is to W1. So we sum them together. So we say, hey, look, we're going to take 0 0.6 of this vector, 0 0.2 of this vector, 0 0.2 of this vector. And together, when we add them together, um, our final vector should encode most of the information based on uh, the value for S1 or the value for word one a little bit of information from word two and a little bit of information from word three. Okay, so mathematically, if we just call this output Z, so the encoding for Z1 is going to be um, for every T that we have. So for every word, right, so that's T. For every word, we're going to have the softmax value of that, um, of, of that particular word multiplied, so this will be a vector, multiplied by the vector um, of, of the, the, all the values that we have. Okay, um, now similarly, we, we then move on to the next word. Okay, so this gives us Z1. This here will be Z2. Okay, so what is the representation for uh, Z1 is this, and this is the represent for word one gives us Z1, and the representation for word two will be denoted as Z2. Now here, the main difference is that instead of considering just this query, we only consider the query for W2. Okay, so this means that um, using K1 will align um, we'll, we'll work out the similarity between Q2 and K1, which gives us S21, Q2, uh, uh, Q2 and K2, and Q2 and K3. Then we'll have our scores, which comes from dividing by the model dimensionality or the square root of the model dimensionality. And then we'll do the softmax operation. So in this case, um, we see that uh, the, 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 the value or how influential word three is to word two is higher than how influential word, two, uh, word one is to word two or word two is to word two. So this arrow here is, is higher, which means that we need to weight the value for word three higher to work out the final representation for word two. Okay, so that was it in, uh, in vector form. Now in matrix form, all we're doing is um, instead of doing like this for loop, we're just doing it in one operation. Okay, so our, our queries are going to be T by DH. And remember, T is the sequence length. So here it would be three times whatever our dimensionality is. Okay, and then we want to work out the similarity for every element in this matrix with every other element in, in the K matrix. So as I, as I said, we're going to have a matrix of Q's, which will come from this slide here. So we're going to project our, our input uh, through the Q network, and this will give us a big Q. Project our network through the K network, and this will give us big K, and project our um, input through the V network, which will give us big V. So we'll take this K, uh, we'll take this Q, and we'll take this K, and we'll work out how similar each one of these are to each other. And this emulate, uh, emulates this, um, this scores operation, but just in matrix form instead of vector form. We obviously have to transpose the K for the shapes to line up. So what we'll have as the output of um, QK or QK transpose is going to be something which is T by T. 
the, the, the dividing by the square root of d, which as I mentioned is just to um, create a gensler softmax, doesn't change the dimensions of what our matrix actually is, and neither does the softmax. So the output of this whole left-hand side here is going to be t by t, and then we'll multiply that by v. So here what we're saying is we have our weighted representations for every single word, and then we're going to multiply that by, by our value, and a value exists for every single word as well. So t by t times v, which is t by dh, gives us t by dh, and this gives us our z, which is a matrix of, um, so it, this matrix has t elements in it. So for every word, we're going to have a d-dimensional representation for this word, and that representation has been computed based on this logic here. Okay, so every word's encoding is based off um, how influential the other words are to that particular word. And this is something that the network learns internally. Okay, let's code this up. here and we will start with um, self-attention okay so this um, little notebook or Python script uh, basically implements a function which does the scale dot product attention and don't worry I'll run through this and then we'll also look at the values um, that I ran through when we were trying to build the intuition of um, what self-attention is trying to do and um, we'll look at what the actual return values are. So this can hopefully build up some intuition as to how your query actually affects your keys. Okay, so um, I'll bring the maths up and we can, uh, we can run through how our attention function in code maps to, to this maths here. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to work out, or our function is going to take a Q, a K, and a V, and these will be coming from uh, some neural network representation. We're not going to be using that in this particular script, but when we actually get onto implementing um, uh, multi-head attention for, for use in our translation model, we'll obviously look at how we'll, how we'll project our inputs to something which is 4Q, 4K, and 4V. Just assume these inputs here, which we'll run through in a second, have already been projected into K, uh, Q, K, and V. Okay. So the first step is to work out a QK matmol. So what is the similarity of every Q to, to K? And we're, we're just going to do that with a, with a matmol. So torch.matmol of our queries by uh, the transpose of K. Okay, and then we'll just square root it by the, uh, or we'll just divide it by the square root of DK. So we've done this. Now we're just square root, uh, dividing it by the square root. Okay, and then we'll run a softmax on it. So we have this matmol scaled, and we're going to run the softmax on our last dimension. So this is going to be t by t. And what we want to do is we want to get the weightings of every single word for every single other word. So after running the softmax, this will give us our attention weights. So how much attention should one word pay to the other word in, uh, in the sequence? So this uh, visually is this, this step right here, where we work out uh, how much attention we, we or what is the weighting or the energy is sometimes called, what is the energy of one word to every other word? Okay, now after the matrix multiplication, um, sorry, after the softmax, we're going to map mole um, the attention weights that we've obtained with our value. So this step here gives us the attention weights, and the step below um, actually gives us our, um, our outputted values. So this would be represented as Z right here. Okay, and then we'll just return this, and that's the, that's the output of the function. So let's, uh, let's run this. And what we'll do then is, um, is, is I'll run you through uh, based on these k's and based on these values, we'll define some queries um, first in vector form, and then we'll look at doing it in a matrix as well. So that's down here, and we'll see how they actually affect the um, affect the output that we get. 
So um, after this scale dot product attention, we have this print attention function, and all this does is um, one run the function for us, the scale dot product attention, and two um, show us the outputs of what uh, uh, of of how um, how the representation changes based on the the different queues that we feed in. Okay, so let's uh, run this function, run this function, then we define our k and v. Okay, so for, for what we're going to do is we're going to define our queue. So here our queue is 0, 10, 0, and let me just scroll up back to where we were looking at this in our slides. Excuse me. Um, so we see here that what we want to try and do is get the value of 10, 0, 2. So this, um, this query should align itself with this key. And this is the second index, so we should have a high, um, or in this case, it'll be a perfect match. So we should return ten zero two. Okay. So what we've done is um, printed out the attention weights. So how much is um, how much attention should this query pay to every other key, or every key in in our matrix? Okay. So here we pay. Um, there's no similarity between. Um, uh, between 0, 10, and uh, 0, 10, 0 and this. No, so you see like none of the indexes actually align with what's in here, um, apart from 0. Here we have um, full similarity, and here we have no, uh, for, for these last two, we have no similarity either, okay? So this is why the attention weights are 0, 1, 0, 0, because this aligns itself perfectly to this. Now, using these attention weights, we then say, hey, look, let's matrix multiply these attention weights with our, our value matrix. And here we're doing 101 times 0, so that's 0. Uh, 1002 times 1, which is 1002. 1050 times 0, which is 0. And 100, or 1060 times 0, which is 0. Okay? And that's why we get 1002. Now, in the second example, we have a um, we have our query, which matches with uh, if I damn let me get rid of the spaces here and then we can we can see what what it highlights. So this query aligns itself with these two keys. So as we looked at in this in the in the presentation, we ideally should be getting weights of half for this and half for this because there's a you know it's not matching with one thing it's matching with multiple things so um, then we're going to take uh, whatever the attention weights that we obtain for uh, for each one of what this query aligns itself to so half and half and then we multiply that by um, by what's in the values okay so here we see half and half so that was, so what we're saying is these first two are zero. So 101 times zero is zero. 1002 times zero is zero. 100, five, zero times 0 0.5 will give us 50, two and a half, zero. Um, 1000, six, zero times 0 0.5 will give us 500, three, zero. And then we just um, average the two together. So this will be 50, this will be, um, uh, sorry, this is two and a half. Sorry, I got my maths wrong. We'll add the two together, um, which is is comes from here. So here we're doing a summation. We're saying, hey, for every word, whatever its weight is, let's multiply that by the the, the particular value it's associated to. So here we're associating half to uh, to this, half to this, and then we have the sum operation, sum. And we're adding the two together. Okay, so this will be fifty plus uh, five uh, plus five hundred, which will give us five fifty. And then two and a half plus three, which will give us five and a half. And obviously zero plus zero is zero. Okay, now we're going to be looking at uh, this example here. So um, we have a match between uh, half a match here with this ten, half a match here with this ten here. So sorry, let me let me go back to the code. So we have 10 here. We don't have a 10 here, but we have a 10 here. And then the rest are zeros. 
But that means we align ourselves half with this key and half with this key. Okay, so again, we should see 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, 0 as our attention weights. And then similar to what we just did in the prior step, we multiply each one of our values by the attention weight that has been assigned. So here, um, uh, here we have 1 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. I think I have the maths here. So this will be 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5. Here we would have 5, 0, 1. And then we'll add 0 0.5 and 5, which will give us 5.5. Um, and 0 for, for the second index, and then um, 0 0.5 and 1 added together gives us 1.5. That's what we obtain here. Okay, so this has just been using a query in, in vector form, basically. Now what happens if we use it in matrix form? Let's run this, and um, what we'll see is that our attention weights will now be a matrix instead of just this, um, uh, instead of just this vector. Okay, so here we fed in um, three, three vectors, or a matrix which had a T of three, okay? And these were its representations. Now, um, just, to, just to let you be aware, the, the vectors that we fed in here are, are these vectors from, from up here. So um, just so you can map back to, uh, hey, look, what was the output of this temp Q? What was the output of this temp Q? And what was the output of this temp Q? Um, so what you'll see here is, um, this 0, 1, 0 gives us this 0, 1, 0 here, right? So this query is aligning itself with this key. Then this query is aligning itself with these two keys. And this query is aligning itself with uh, these first two keys. So we now have basically the attention vectors that we had previously, but now they're in, in matrix form. So we'll see that we have 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and half, half, 0, 0. And then our output, instead of being vectors, is now also a matrix, okay? So we can see here that whatever the output of this was, because these are the same queries that we're just running, um, but instead of doing it in vectors, we're doing it in matrix, um, we, we have the same outputs. So, yeah, we have uh, this, this vector here, which gave us 10, 0, 2, um, when we ran it in vector, and in matrix, it will also give us 10, 0, 2. So this is our matrix output. So if these were words, right, we would obtain these words by feeding them through the, the WQ network that I um, I said earlier on. We'll have encodings of words. We'll feed them through a network, get, uh, you know, something which we'll call Q encodings. Um, so these are just the Q representations, and we'll do something similar for K and V. So here we'll have vectors, which we're, um, the machine is learning these, these representations internally, but we'll try to align these uh, machine-generated vectors to the machine-generated Qs, and then try and find out the machine generated values. And we'll use these values to um, compose a, uh, a representation for our whole sequence, similar to what we have here. And this will um, basically be our self attention block. We'll do some other things to this, but this is the core of what goes on. And we'll use this to uh, eventually make a prediction of, of a word that we should decode. But this here so far has been how, to, how self attention at its core actually works. The next video, we'll look at something called multi-head self-attention, which is conceptually quite straightforward if you can understand self-attention. See you soon.